sidekick with me. That's my sidekick, and he's really pitiful. He can't see, he can't hear, he can't talk. So therefore, I just call him my little blooming idiot. <laughs> I've also got some stories. Can everybody hear me back in the back? Pauline, can you hear me? All right, don't need my phone. Okay. Said, uh, this lady, during her doctor's visit, asked, how do you determine whether or not an old person should be put into a rest home? Said, the doctor says, we fill the bathtub. Then we offer a teaspoon, a teacup, and a bucket to the person who emptied the tub. I get it, the woman replied. A normal person would use the bucket because it's bigger than the spoon and the teacup. No, the doctor replied. A normal person would just pull the plug. You want to bend next to a window? <laughs> this is a family tree. A boy went to his mother and asked, Mom, where did men come from? Well, son, in the beginning, God created earth. Then he created the first man and called him Adam. He took a rib from Adam and created the first woman and called her Eve. That is how man was created. The little boy looked puzzled, then commented, Dad said we came from apes. That's your father's side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Talking at a party, a doctor and a lawyer were constantly interrupted by people discussing legal issues or asked for free medical advice. After the fifth interruption, the doctor asked the lawyer, what do you do to stop people from asking you for legal advice? Went out of the office. I give it to them, replied the lawyer, and then I send them a bill. Though surprised by this approach, the doctor agreed to give a try. The next day, he prepared bills for everyone he advised during the party. When he went to place them in the mailbox, he discovered a bill from a lawyer. <laughs> When a, a pastor preached the gospel, members pay attention and listen to every word. There's only one problem. Uncle Dave, our senior deacon, always dozes off halfway through the pastor's sermon. His snoring is very loud, but it really bothers our pastor. So our pastor made a deal with the Uncle Dave's grandson. Every time Uncle Dave dozes off, he agrees to pay the boy $2 to wake him up. This worked okay for the next three weeks. But on the fourth week, Uncle Dave dozed off and the loud snoring continued uninterrupted. After church, our pastor asked the grandson, why didn't you wake Uncle Dave and earn the two dollars? The boy smiled sheepishly before answering, because granddad pays me five dollars not to bother him. <laughs> <laughs> this is family affair. Daddy, I want to get married, said little Sammy, tells his father, who replies, first you need a girlfriend. I already found one, Sammy says. Who, asked the father. Grandma, said Sammy. Well, you can't marry my mother. Why not? You married mine. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called Brother's Keeper. It was pouring rain outside. First grade teacher been a full 10 minutes of tugging and pulling and putting boots on the little boy. Once on, the boy replied, those aren't my boots. For 10 minutes, the teacher tugged and pulled and to get them off. As she finally got the second one off, the boy said, they're my brothers, but mom makes me wear them. <laughs> <laughs> After a long day in the field, a weary farmer stands on the back porch looking over his land. When his wife joined him, I've been praying that Junior will take over the farm someday, he tells her. Well, the Lord works in mysterious ways, said the wife. What do you mean, he asked. Junior just got a job at the bank. <laughs> He's going to repossess the farm. <laughs> uh, 
See, a woman in waiting in line in the bank to get her check cashed. When she, when the, the teller arrived, she handed her the check. The bank teller looked at the check over. Can you identify yourself? He asked. The woman reached into her purse, pulled out a mirror, looked in it, and said, Yep, that's me, all right. <laughs> An elderly woman who had never married died recently in her handwritten instructions for her memorial service. She requested no male pauperers. They won't take me out while I'm alive, and I don't want them to take me out. While I'm alive. <laughs> I got one. I got one more little. Let's make it more. This. Um, a definition of a rotisserie is a morbid Ferris wheel for chickens. <laughs> <laughs> and said, marry an orphan and you'll never have to spend boring holidays with the in-laws. <laughs> An elderly couple sat at home on the couch after return from a wedding. The wife said to her husband, you used to kiss me every chance you got. The husband, feeling very guilty, leaned over and gave her a kiss. The wife said, you used to give me a hug. The husband leaned over and gave her a hug. Then the wife said to her husband, you used to nibble on my neck. The husband got up and left the room. The wife said, what did I say? Why are you leaving? The husband says, I'm going to get my teeth. <laughs> Preacher came to call the other day. He said to me, "At your age, you should think about the hereafter." I told him, "I do all this all the time. No matter where I am, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the bathroom, upstairs or downstairs, I ask myself, what am I hereafter?" <laughs> okay, I've got a little song. This is from. Uh, My favorite things <laughs> from uh, Sound of Music. May locks and nose drops and needles for knitting, walkers and handrails and utensil fittings, bundles of magazines all tied with string. These are a few of my favorite things. Cadillacs, cataracts, urinates, glasses, polydent, fixodent, false teeth in glasses, pacemakers, golf carts, and coaches with swings. These are a few of my favorite things. When the pipes leak, when the bones creak, when the knees go bad, then I remember my favorite things and I don't feel so bad. Hot tea and crumpets and corn pads and bunions. No spicy hot food, no food cooked with onions. And roots in the pad and hot meals they bring. These are a few of my favorite things. Back pains, confused brains, and no fear of sinning. Thin bones and fractures and hair that is thinning. And we won't mention our short sunken frames. When we remember our favorite things, when the joints ache, when the hips break, when the eyes grow dim, then I remember the great life I've had, and then I don't feel so vital. And it's out of the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and it's the words of Jesus, verses 1 through 12. Now when he, Jesus, saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. I'm sorry I misread that. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you falsely, say all evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks like sea. When I'm lost, it sends out.
probably some of you have heard or know about whippets. Yeah. Yeah. I have never heard of a whippet until we had a plumber that came around to our house. And he opens the door and he looks around the corner and he sees our dog. Whippet? He said, oh no, we're very gentle with her. We <laughs> <laughs> then he told me what a whippet was. <laughs> Trouble with dogs, we've had it at our house when I was little. We used to have a German Shepherd named Cindy, and she was a good dog, but she was very protective. And so when I had my buddy Dave over to play, we had to put the dog in the basement so that she wouldn't bother uh, Dave. Well, how many people remember the Omar man that used to come around and deliver big goods? Okay. Well, he came around, and he came to the gate, and he stopped, and he looked, and he looked, and he looked, no, Cindy, okay. So he comes out, and he's going up and gets to the porch. Well, my buddy, he's got a streak in him. Sick him, Cindy! <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a string of bread and big pump donuts and all kinds of things between the porch and his truck. So mom said, we're going to have to sell that dog. And she had people, yeah, she had people... Uh, coming around and uh, she tried to tell people the good parts of the dog, about the dog, which she would, but she'd get them a little bit mixed up. It just didn't quite come out right. For example, uh, one guy came in and he said, well, don't worry about feeding her. She'll eat anything. She loves children. She loves that was the end of that. Anyway, that's uh, about it. I guess uh, my time probably about up. I probably by this time you'll agree with a fellow that I used to know when I helped my dad in his hardware store. I would tell him these stories, and he would listen. Finally, came up to me and said, "Steve, it's just one thing I cannot figure out. Says, how in the world can you have blue eyes when you're full of baloney up there?" <laughs>
song chokes. Well, this is uh, one I just heard the other day. Uh, this uh, lady was crying her heart out at work, and the boss comes by and says, what's the matter? She says, well, my mother just died. He said, well, that's terrible. He says, you take the day off and go home. Oh, no. She said, I'm going to stick around here with my friends. It'll be better for me. Well, later on in the afternoon, she's really crying, and the boss comes by and says, what's the matter now? Well, she said, I just got a call from my sister. Her mother died, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> 